Awo, shalom, rastafari. We want to continue where we left off, and we want to touch on a particular interesting point that we had um, put up on our channel. Mm. Oh, Shabbat Shalom. This is a Shabbat. This is like a Shabbat message, but a very important message because we're, we're at the start, at the head of a new year as black Hebrews and black Jews and like Rastafari. And we are reviewing, you know, this present time and some of the signs and what has been revealed. As you probably already know, Muammar Gaddafi um, is dead. Um, we're happy that justice has been partially done. Now, some will say, why? Gaddafi, Pan-African is black, blah, 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 you know, all the stuff that some Pan-Africans say. No, 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 no. You're ignorant. You're ignorant. Anyone who fights against our father, my father, is worthy of death. You understand? They could be, they could be my family members. They're worthy of death. Don't you understand? Don't you have any faithfulness? Don't you have any loyalty? Don't you know what this is really about? But in our video called um, uh, Sabbath Zakor, Zakor or Zakar mean remembrance, the Sabbath of remembrance. We had labeled it Amalek's son, Haman, Gaddafi. In other words, we linked Gaddafi to Haman. Do you remember who Haman was and what Haman wanted to do? Haman, you find Haman in the book of Esther. Haman in the book of Esther wanted to exterminate the black Jews of Persia. He wanted to, to kill and exterminate the black Jews of, of, of Persia. Similar to how Gaddafi wanted to exterminate the black Jews and Hebrews of Ethiopia with the head of them, with Kedemawi Haile Selassie. Gaddafi was an enemy of his imperial majesty. He was a young, know-nothing upstart that even proposed that the OAU be taken out of Addis Ababa from the black and put in Egypt among the Turkish Greek, um, the Turkish Greek so-called pseudo Arabs, who basically stole that kingdom and stole that land from the native black people, and that's a part of the history of uh, of the invasions of Egypt and the different foreign peoples that came into Egypt and pushed out and persecuted the black people. That's why Egypt is known, even though it's in Africa, it's known as a white country. Anybody who comes from Egypt, you look at their passport and information, it states their race as being white. Even if they are Aswan or dark-skinned uh, Egyptian or true Egyptian, like the Aswanites, it states that they are white as well. So Gaddafi also went so far as calling himself king of kings of, of Africa. Mm -hmm. Those Nollywood child-sacrificing Africans better watch out. They really better watch out because many of them, you see the pictures where they're all sitting down together around Gaddafi, you know, this whole light skin, dark skin thing. And, so, and Gaddafi has done nothing. He basically did nothing besides grease their palms with some gubo. He gave them some gubo. He greased their palms. He also greased a lot of Ethiopian palms. So my brothers and the brotherhood, let us be awake, aware, and be wise. You understand? Wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Let us recognize what time we're living in in order to reestablish our African Zion and, and to build the walls of the new Jerusalem, the spiritual walls of the new Jerusalem. But let's get into a little bit of how this was a prophecy fulfilled. Well, we label that Gaddafi is a modern type of Haman, of Haman. Who was Haman? Who was Haman? Let us uh, bring out a, a, a particular um book that we're going to touch on right here. Let's, let us bring out uh, this book right here. Give me one moment. So we didn't have it already in hand. But we're going to touch on the metaphysical, the metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Where is that book? Uh, give me one moment. The Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. All right, so the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. So you know it, we updated our site. We updated our site. Um, this is it, the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, www.lojsociety.org forward slash study. 
and there's some uh, free freeware and shareware, and there's a PDF version of of a lot of our books and materials, archival books and materials, so you can see where the ministry of His Majesty Lonnie Society has come from, where we're at right now, and you can utilize this on your computer, your tablet, or your smartphone. You know, you can look at these books if you don't can't afford the hard copy. Get some of our freeware and our shareware, and give a donation, of course, to support this ministry as all the faithful, when they're able, can can and will do cheerfully. All right. Now, this metaphysical Bible diction. What we're going to do first is we're going to look at. We're going to look at. Uh, we're going to keep this Simchat Torah because that's the day. You understand? That's the day that it that, that it happened on the day the twentieth was the time of the Simchat Torah. Yorit Desita Sisaha Orit. So let's look at Haman. Haman. Who was Haman? Haman was. Amalek, Amalek's son. Haman was Amalek's son. So which one should we look at first? We should first look at Amalek, really, because Amalek is that old-time en enemy of, of Israel. Do you recall what happened when the children of Israel were coming out of, when, when they came out of Egypt, as we have been coming out of Babylon, when they came out of Egypt, what Amalek, Amalek did? Don't confuse that, brothers, with Amlak. Amlak means the source, the source sent, or God, if you will, or in the good is Lord. Amalek, Amalek is different than Amlak. So please learn your language. Don't be uh, confused by the English, because the English makes it look very similar. The difference is this A here and this K here is a Q sound. You understand? So it's more guttural for the Ethiopic speakers. It's more of a click, like a K. It's not a K. It's not like Amlak. It's, uh, it's, it's Amalek. Just please make that, make that note, that difference right there, and learn your language. Learn our language. Now, let's look up Ama, Amalek. What does it say for Ama, Amalek? Here, Amalek means warlike. It doesn't mean warrior. Please note that. It means warlike. Grab your pen and your paper and your sacred scripture and bring a willing and attentive mind to receive the half of the story not told since our ancestors, Lord Sheep of the House of Israel, was brought to this land that's not our own in and about circa 1530-1600 A.D. Please note that. 400 years, 1530, the King of Kings. 400 years, 1600, the year 2000. 2001, September 11th, Ethiopian New Year. Uh, come on, don't you, don't you know what's going on? Pay attention, that's the price of the truth. Now, here for Amalek, Amalek means warlike, dweller in the veil, the veil, to say the valley, valley dweller, that licks up, something that licks up. Now, Amalek was the son of Eliphaz by his concubine, Timna. He was the grandson of Esau. Gaddafi, and many of the other peoples out there, but we're focusing on Gaddafi right now. Gaddafi was an Edomite, was one of the Edomites. See, a lot of you don't really understand this. You say he's an Arab. But the Arabs and the Edomites are all mixed up together. How do we know this? Because Esau, Esau married Ishmael, one of Ishmael's descendants. Go study your Bible. Study and show yourself approved. To God as a workman that need not to be ashamed. Because if you say you're of this and you're not, you need to be ashamed. Because Father needs, like he says, he sent those back and he says, next time, send the right people. Our prayer is that we will be the right people of the King of Kings and his Christ. Now, the metaphysical of Amalek, and this is all connected with Gaddafi and the recent events. Go see our former video at our YouTube channel, um, Ethiopian World Net, and the video is called The Sabbath, Zakor, Amalek, Haman's son, Gaddafi. So the metaphysical is that Esau represents the body consciousness. He represents the body, not psychical consciousness, not spiritual consciousness, but body consciousness. From him, the Amalek Awiyan, or the Amalekites, were a descendant from Amalek. Amalek, meaning warlike dweller in the veil that licks up or consumes, that which consumes, signifies lust. 
that base desire which, when established in the animal forces of the subconscious mind of man, is the begetter, is the begetter, notice like a begetter, this one begat that one, that one begat that one, is the begetter or gives birth to the destructive, rebellious, perverted appetites and passions. See, we have the over, this is what we say when we look at those videos of Gaddafi just before he gets, uh, gets killed and everything like that by his sons. He said, my sons, what's going on? They're playing ignorant. He created that. He, he, he forced that. You know what it says? That what it says? Uh, it says that evil shall slay the wicked. You understand? His own evilness and what he bred caused that. Now, Amalek's father was Eliphaz. Now, Eliphaz means that God is strength, that God is fine gold. What did they find from Gaddafi? What did they find from him? They found that gold gun, and they found other things that were gold. Remember that, that, that um, AK-47 that was gold-plated or golden or spray-painted? Who knows what kind of gold it was? But you see the connection? Thus, desire at its origin is good. Desire at its origin is good and is of God. Desire is good and desire is of God. But, Negurgin, when it is misinterpreted, you see, he self Gaddafi calls him King of Kings of Africa. If no other reason that he should have repented or been taken out, that's one of them, besides being an adversary, an enmity, one who undermined Ethiopia by funding rebellious movements against his imperial majesty because he had oil money, and he just threw it around, you know, wherever, you know. Um, but it, when, when it's misinterpreted by the carnal man, and it's very clear that he was not a spiritual, uh, a spiritual man, but he was a carnal man, it becomes lust. So lust is, let's put this right here, lust, on the metaphysical level, lust is Amalek. Amalek. Right? Now, the history of the Amalekites we're going to deal with next. Let's deal with the history of the Amalekites. The Amalekites, and this is on page 43 of the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, interpreted by Ine Rasia di Nosteferi, being interpreted by I. Wendem Yadin. Amalek Awiyan, or the Amalekites belonging to Amalek. They belong to Amalek. The descendants of Amalek, grandson of Esau, Genesis 14 and 7, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verses 6 to 8, um, chapter 30, verses 1 to 18. They are called, collectively, they are called to Amalek. This is what we have going on in that region of the world as Libya. Yes, it's going to be very interesting what happens um, after this, but let's find out metaphysically what, what, what's behind this. Metaphysically, it says that the base desires of the individual, the basis desires of the individual. To those in spiritual understanding, it is clear that the veil or valley dweller represents that great realm of mind called the subconscious. That's so why when he got caught, he was like, what's going on? You know, what's going on? You was running, right? What's going on? You was hiding, right? What's going on? You wearing a wig, right? What's going on? Played ignorant, the subconscious. The conscious man now was waking up and seeing his death before him, so he wants to know what's going on. Here it goes on to say the Amalek Awiyan or the Amalekites, they symbolize the animal forces. Look at those videos. You, so it, <laughs> what Gaddafi gave birth to killed him. What he gave birth to destroyed him. Overstand this. The Amalekites symbolize the animal forces, appetites, and passions. They are warlike. They are what? Warlike. And are destructive in their nature. Destructive in their nature. This is what this whole Libya, Libya, Libya crisis, you know, this is what the whole Libya crisis have, has, has demonstrated. They are warlike and are destructive in their nature. They must be cleansed completely out of consciousness by denial. You must deny that. Now, look at this metaphysically. You're saying one must deny this. See 1 Samuel chapter 15. Now, going on, disobedience. Disobedience has many forms. The most stubborn is that, they, that, that which absolutely refuses to obey. 
that which refuses to obey, Gaddafi refused to obey everything, including even Islam, his so-called professed religion. He refused to obey everything. It stands up for its rights. He felt he had some right. And, and even though the whole tide was turning, of the African nations who he gave Google and bribe and oil money to the European, you know, there was ways out for him, but he, he would not. So it refuses to obey. It tells us that certain things are good for us. That, that the race has always indulged in them. He felt that it's always the way it has been and it's always going to be that way and that such indulgence is necessary. Such ideas as these are the Amalek Aoyan or the Amalekites down in the veil, in the lower consciousness. They have become fixed in consciousness and refuse to abdicate. Now, you know what, brothers and sisters, some may think that I've read this before, uh, uh, queuing up to this. No. I had a basic idea of this and may have gone over this years ago. But as soon as I saw certain things, the Holy Spirit said, this is what's going on. He's like Haman. And I didn't want to personally put that out because, like, I knew that if we put this out, this is only going to manifest. He's going to, he's going to be killed. We don't, you know, we're not desirous that even, even the enemies, our enemies should be put to death, but we know that it's only right. You know, we don't desire it. It saddens us. What we saw, it saddens us. But we know that it's just too. You know what I'm saying? That it's just too. So not looking at just the good, the evil, oh, that was good, or that was... No, we're looking at what is just, because only what is just can weigh and balance the scales. You see, the good can't weigh and balance good and evil. The evil can't weigh and balance good. You know what I'm saying? But it is justice. You understand? And mercy triumphed over justice. So when Gaddafi said, no mercy, we knew he was a dead man walking. When he called these people rats, his own people rats, we know that these rats, just like in those horror movies, are going to eat him up. And that's what we see in those videos. It's a, it was a horror show. You understand? It was a horror show. Probably the only time Gaddafi was conscious was probably minutes and moments before he was taken out of here. That's probably the only time he really maybe understood. But it says that they have become fixed in consciousness and refuse to abdicate for 42 years. They are not receptive to the illumination of the spirit. It wasn't receptive to the illumination of the spirit. They crave self-gratification and are determined to have it. They must be taken up in prayer and denied place in consciousness. This is why we say pray. We must pray after seeing and witnessing these things, my brother. Pray. What it says, they must be taken up in prayer and denied place in consciousness. Deny them place in consciousness. If we do not destroy these errors, these are errors, and this is what's holding back the new Africa, the true Africa, these errors. If we do not destroy these errors that God, that Jah, Rastafari commands I and I to destroy. Sooner or later, they will obtain command. To do what? To such an extent that they will endeavor to destroy I and I. And this is exactly what's been happening. They've been destroying I and I. Obedience to the Lord. Obedience to Adonai. Obedience to Yahweh. Obedience to Jah, Rastafari, which represents the divine law. It ensures salam. It ensures shalom. It ensures peace and joy. Simchat Torah. You always how this is a prophecy fulfilled the 20th day. Simchat Torah. Obedience to Adonai ensures peace and joy and leads into the paths of pleasantness. Yamara Yehun. And abundant prosperity. My brothers and sisters, there's more to come about this. So stay tuned. Shalom, Rastafari.